Hello. Today I want to show you how I'm going to paint on my lino and cut round it. So what I'm working on here is this sunset picture and I have already begun to make the clouds in it look three-dimensional by having two layers to them. You can see here on this darker area. So I've printed my background and I've dealt with the yellow area here, the bright area. And now I want to put a little bit more depth into these clouds and to make them a little bit more three dimensional. So I'm going to do another layer of painting onto the lino to act as a cutting guide. So what I'm going to use is white poster paint. So I've bought myself some very cheap children's poster paint and I've got a little pot here and I tend to put some in the bottom of the pot and it stays there. And actually I prefer it when it's dried out a bit because I can put a spot of water into it and use it, my brush, to pick up a little bit of paint because what I don't want is an overloaded brush. I want nice textural painting on my lino. I don't want a big glob of white paint on there. Now, the white poster paint is going to work fine for this job because um, I only need it for one layer. I'm going to put the painting on, I'm going to cut the block, and then the painting's finished with. That white painting is done. The thing about this white poster paint is it won't endure several layers of printing and cleaning. It'll stick around for a little bit, but it tends to just sort of disappear. Um, it doesn't offset onto the print or cause any problems like that, but nor does it give me a permanent guide for the life of the reduction print. So it's great for, for using if I just want a guide for cutting a layer, but it's not great if I want a guide that's going to stay on throughout the inking and cleaning. So for that, I've been using Sumi ink, uh, water-based ink. Indian ink would work just as well. But this only works if you are printing with oil-based ink. If I was printing with water-based ink, this would be a disaster because I would ink it up and the water-based ink would immediately leach into the printing ink and you'd end up with a mess. So using water-based paints and inks to create your image on the lino really only works if you're going to use oil-based ink. If you are using safety wash ink, so the sort of oil-based ink that you can clean off with water, bear in mind that you can't keep your image if you clean in water, you will just wash your image off. It will print fine, it won't offset, that won't be a problem, but when you come to clean your block, if you clean it with water, you will clean off your um, painted information as well. So you'd need to work with white spirit if you wanted to keep it. The best advice that I can give you is that you experiment yourselves with paint and ink and what works and do a tester before you start anything. And that way you can figure out how the products you've got in your studio with your materials work best. I can, I can sort of suggest things, but there is no better thing than doing your own testing. So to get back to my little print here, what I'm going to do is to think about the motion of those clouds. And I want to, I'm going to start with the easy bit, which is kind of up here. And I want to sort of build on the light areas. So now I'm thinking about where paler bits of cloud might be and where darker bits of cloud might be. So I'm just sort of muddling my way through here. And you can see I haven't got very, I'm going to put a speck more water in there because it's a little bit dry. It's dried out while I've been speaking to you. don't want too much, but just a little drip. So that that's just water in there. And these are really good. These are called safety wash bottles and they're really handy if you like to just put a little tiny bit of water where you need it. So I'm just going to carry on that movement and just... I know where the bits are cut away, those are the light bits. So what I want are those light bits to continue. So I'm thinking about 
the the setting sun is below the clouds and the light is coming up through through the clouds so all the lighting is going to be sort of on the underneath of things so I'm just visualizing that as I go and what I tend to do is I I look at photographs of sunsets and paintings of sunsets and things like that and then when it comes to actually putting brush to lino I go my own way now up here I don't think that's quite right so I've got a damp towel here and I'm just going to wipe that bit off and I'm, I'm going to redo that and again down here I'm thinking of that kind of flow and by using a dryish brush it means I can almost like rub it on the lino to place the paint so I absolutely want to lose all that bit down there and again I need a spot more water in there So all the time I'm trying to keep my brush dryish. It's got a little bit wet now, let's just dry that off on the towel. And then I can go. And I'm just playing with where I think that white boundary might be, where the paler bits of the cloud would be and where there are darker bits. When I come to print this, it's going to be a very transparent layer of slightly bluey grey, just to give those clouds a bit of life. That's better. Okay, so now I have played with those. I think we could just about start cutting. Let's just get a little bit more in there. So the bit that I'm cutting away is the white area. Let's just put that print somewhere safe. So I want to cut away the white and leave behind the pink. And I might come back and do a little bit more painting as I go. So if I'm going to start, let's start in this area here. And I'm just going to select a few bits and pieces that I think would be useful. So I'm using a V-tool here and I'm just going to start cutting in, following my paint marks here. So you'll have noticed that I've brought in some lighting to help me cut. Um, I'm using my trusty builder's light here to, to bump up the contrast so that I can see what I'm up to here. So I'm going to start my cutting by going around the edges and just paying attention to the brush strokes. The, the joy of using a brush for this is that it gets so much movement into the, um, the shape of things and it's a very dynamic way of working. It doesn't mean you have to follow every tiny mark of the brush, but it gives a really lovely dynamic feel to it and I'm just taking the time to come 
kind of around the edge here. I didn't brush around the edge, but I'm going to do that because you often get in a sunset where the edges of the clouds, the light just hits the edge of the cloud. And you'll notice as I'm cutting how that lino is just snapping away as I'm working. This is really why I'm so keen on traditional artists' lino, because it has that brittleness, that, that ability to just snap at the end of a cut. It just makes it much easier to work in the way that I do, um, especially when I'm using brush strokes. Okay, so looking for a nice big gouge so all of that can come out now. And what I will do is take the time to make sure that there's no chance of any of the cutaway spaces transferring. There's no chance of any sort of unwanted chatter from ridges in this, this area here, because I want these shapes to be very specific. I don't want any kind of unexpected printing from dead areas. And you'll notice how I keep turning my block so that I'm going with the flow of the cutting all the time. You should do a much better job if you're comfortable to cut. Here I've got, I kind of follow on, I've got this, this area here that's going all together and I'll make sure that I leave some darker areas too so that the shape kind of flows through. So I'm not trying to kind of create an absolutely photo perfect sunset, um, it's a kind of mixture between what I think a sunset looks like, and also just enjoying the shape of the printing brushes, uh, the printing, uh, the paint brushes is what I'm trying to say. Let me get this right. I'm enjoying the shape of the brush marks that I've made. So. And before I take a print on the actual um, reduction print itself, I'll probably take a test print just to check that I haven't got any ugly shapes and I haven't done anything like make a face or, or um, something recognisable in my cutting. Because when you cut like this, there is nothing worse than finishing it off and then somebody saying, oh, look, there's a face. Um, that's kind of depressing. My benchmark for that is if I can see the face, then I get upset about it. But if it, only they can see the face, then, you know, there's always going to be someone who sees something in one of your prints. So I don't, I don't worry too much. It's only if I can see it that I get agitated. So now I can start working my way up into this big cloud here. I'm not sure if I've apologised for the rain already, but as you can probably hear, we're having a bit of a bit of a rainstorm on the roof at the moment. It's been a very wet autumn. So 
So as you can see, I've got quite a long way to go with this and then I am going to need to print it with that transparent bluey colour. But thank you for watching this film and I hope you'll join me for another one.